Two Davids Walk Into a Bar was filmed in front of a live studio audience. David Anderson, and you're listening to Two Davids Walk Into a Bar. With me, as always, is Mr. David Lawler. How are you tonight, sir? You suddenly sound as though you're in the bathroom sitting on the toilet. I'm not. I'm, I'm just on my trying, microphone. I'm, I'm trying to picture you, and I can't. I, I feel like you're huddled over. You've got a script in your hand, and um, you know, you're finishing your toilet, as they no, say. No, believe me, I wanted to, but I thought I wanted to go on the proper microphone, so I am on my computer. <laughs> Remember, I just I told you I was having all these weird boot up issues with my computer. Ah. Yes, yes. Uh, how, I, well, you know, I've got a headache, but I'm happy to be recording at night again. The morning is really bad for me. I feel as though I am wearing someone else's skin, and my tongue is, is it feels like it needs to be shaved, and I haven't gotten like 15 cups of coffee in me or something. Mm -hmm. But other, you know, I mean, at night, nighttime is my time. It's the right time. As yeah, I've so I have before. to do it your way because, you know, it's, I guess you're in charge. I guess. I'm in charge because I edit this fucker, I produce it, and I set it up. Uh -huh. Anyway. Damn it. You're just well, the I'm talent. The you're just the talent. I'm you're... the talent. Yeah, I know. I'm the working <laughs> stiff, but I make no money on this. <laughs> I make money with a real with a real regular job, you know, like some people. Well, those checks will be coming in real soon. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, what do we? Uh, okay, uh, you you uh, had something to right say. Now, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm not gonna plug you, but I'm gonna promote you. About, the, about br that? the brilliant writer David Lawler. Yes. Where is uh -uh. that guy? Where is Handsome? There he is. Hey, Handsome. There he is. Okay, so these are uh, vintage cable box uh, articles that you can find on Blissville.net or VHSRewind.com. I and wrote them. All Ooh. of his cable memories of the '80s and all the inappropriate things that he watched, much like I did. <laughs> Yeah, great it was, articles. It's so much uh, fun watching cable television back in those days because it was it was a completely unexplored part of entertainment for kids. Anyway, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, it's like mm -hmm. you you had a lot of fun, and it, it wasn't even just movies that were rated R. Even movies that were rated G and kids movies, the kids, just everything about those times. And I'm talking specifically about, I guess the early to mid 80s and maybe even a little bit into the late 80s was 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 so much fun well it was also enhanced by the fact that you were a kid and everything was magical then well everything Be yeah everything is magical. before life completely kicked you in the ass I, I i would really love for a movie to come along that just knocks me on my ass i'm i'm hoping that a few uh, movies movie. knock me on my ass all the time none of these what, none of these what movies you're do i mean there's no there you know i was thinking uh, what I, was, I was watching a Red Letter Media special. That they were talking about the Jordan Peele, Peele movie, Us, and another movie that was premiered on Netflix called Paddleton. And they were talking about the fact that movies like, like, like a Paddleton don't really get theatrical distribution anymore. They just throw them on streaming services, and you kind of have to hunt for them. And it's not like it wasn't it, – it, like to these days, it's all about the big – tentpole comic book kind of movies with really huge budgets and they need to break even to get it out there 4500 5000 theaters and make that money as quickly as you can and and then people get bored with it so they they get rid of it they put it on blu-ray or streaming or something so and then we have the cycle of like seven or eight nine comic book movies every year now That's well just i mean i just i just uh, got it in the mail i'm gonna try to watch it tonight i got aquaman that came out at christmas Aquaman, starring yeah. jason baywatch momoa momoa yeah from Game of yeah. Thrones, who yeah, not not the guy from Entourage, and it's not a James Cameron film. <laughs> James Cameron, we we were gonna talk about first. This is like the end of our basic cable treatment has been going on forever because you and I have yeah. a lot to say about these things. So yes. in this final episode of that, we're gonna talk about uh, Comedy Central and the various incarnations of it before it became Comedy Central, and we're gonna talk, yeah, we're gonna talk I about. I have I have some memories. I'm sure it, 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 oh, it's yeah. kind of like it's almost like your wife has memories of this because you told me like a story of what the way it worked out for her. Yeah, that's Comedy right. Central. Yeah, yeah. Well, she she lived in an unfortunate area where she didn't get one channel. She got another one, and then she didn't get what it eventually became. Mm -hmm. Speaking of yeah. my wife, I want to bring this up. Uh, my wife will be. 
starting a recap review blog. Uh, she did she did the monkeys before she finished up the monkeys, yep. and uh, she's been now kind of relegated to doing obituaries for all these people that keep dying, like James Frawley and Peter Tork. But she will be starting a Black Adder blog, and uh, <gasps> okay, now I'll I'll read that one because uh, maybe in fact maybe we can actually have a, like a conversation, maybe a three way conversation. Yeah, about that. yeah, yeah, that is I, a great absolutely. Show. Because I have lots of memories of that. I promoted her Monkeys versus Machine blog, which became very, very popular, and uh, will promote this too. And I keep trying to push for the title. I want it to be called A Cunning Plan, but she, but she, uh, but she's like, <laughs> I don't know. It's been done. I feel like it's been done before. You know, she sound, kind of sounds like that when she talks. But uh, she'll be doing this Black Adder blog, and she'll be talking about each episode, what it means to her, all that stuff. It'll have all that fun stuff that you remember from the monkeys. And this is something I could not support more because we absolutely love the show. We just mm-hmm. finished watching it because. I believe she got it for a birthday present, the Black Adder Ultimate Edition on DVD, which had every Black Adder episode and all and, the and specials. It, so it, ha- it even has that sort of special, almost the, the Black Adder back and forth. Matter of fact, were, it, we just watched that. We were just watched that like, tonight. It, we watched the back and forth show tonight. Yeah, it was. It was because it, it, I remember when Black Adder it was like kind of ended. Yeah, and, and the Black Adder goes for us with like you know, spoiler, a lot of death. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. I but, would say but that, really like, the best was, like, season. Everybody was, yeah, everybody was asking, like, okay, well, when is he going to do some new Black Adder series? And he was able to almost, like, do a new series without having to do a new series. He kind of did a it's special, very, and it kind of... Rowan Atkinson is very interesting. He is, like, probably secretly one of the biggest box office stars. His movies make an enormous amount of money on very low budgets. Not in the U.S. <laughs> no, they do he well here. Johnny no. English movies and the Mr. Bean things, and they do like decent here, but then like the international on those things is always. You really got to remember that their budgets are like twenty million bucks or yeah, something, the, and they wind the up making like four hundred million dollars. Budgets, yeah. So we uh, a nice segue into comedy here because we're going to talk about Comedy Central now. Yes. In New York, I can tell you that we did not have either the Ha Channel or the Comedy Channel, but we did when Comedy Central came about. We did get Comedy Central. Uh, Bronwyn was telling me that they that she only had one of those iterations. I believe it was she might have had the Ha Channel, but she did not have the Comedy Channel. And then yeah. when they they eventually merged the, to form Comedy Central, she was completely shut out of that deal in Michigan as well. Yeah, which I, was, I had be, the same thing. Of unfortunately, like, uh, because we had... she was a Mystery Science Theater fan, and that's the only place she could see it. Yeah, we had the we we got the Ha Channel. And then when they merged with Comedy Network, then for like about I don't know maybe just a few months, they were CTV. CTV. I remember the and then and then oh they you remember Comedy the Network. logo of the Hot Channel was something like Lucille Ball. It was like a, a profile of, of a cartoon oh, of Lucille Ball laughing, right? Might be that I remember. I remember there were they did little promos, and I swear I remember there was. And I I know it's it can't be on YouTube, although maybe it is. Uh, it was Phil Hartman. And he did these little ha promos. Yeah, yeah. And he was doing like voices and things. Um, I remember Phil Hartman. Had, they, he had yeah. such a great voice, and he did a lot of voiceovers anyway. And he did a lot of mocking spoof voiceovers for Saturday Night Yeah, Live but it was literally stuff. like him, like physically him. It was like a, it was like him, and you saw Phil Hartman, and he was doing the voices, and it was him like making faces and things. And I remember, man, I just, I just, there's all this like lost stuff where I'm like, man, I wish I'd saved that tape. <laughs> <laughs> it I, seems I saved so innocuous at the time. What I, I do have a number of VHS tapes that have that are uh, just mainly Mystery Science Theater, but some of them have commercials still in them. Mm-hmm. So there's still some vintage stuff in there. Now, when did the Hot Channel start? Do you remember? Okay, ninety. No. I think around the same time as the Comedy Network. It was like I because I rem- okay I rem- I'm trying to remember. Oh wait, when you I know first... what? It might have been 1988 yeah. because okay, it might have been. Yeah, Because I, yeah. I, I, I but all I remember is I remember us getting it. I have like very solid memories of that in say like summer of 90 is when we got it. Right. Cuz they kept expanding our channel lineup and say here now you have more channels now you have more channels now you have more channels. So it, it kind of got up to like oh I can get this. So we watched it and uh, I was uh, they showed lots of it showed Mark and Mindy, I remember that. They had well yeah, they had a lot of space on their schedule. So what I remember was they would they would fit in really big blocks of programming, like they they would have shoot, short uh, the show called Short Attention Span Theater. Yes, with uh, John Stewart was on that, wasn't he? Yes, he was. He was. Well, I believe he became a host of it when it moved to Comedy Central. I forget who. Oh, it was like it was like Brian Regan, and his and his brother. Uh, um, 
I forget his brother's name. Martin Regan, maybe something like that. Oh, there, there was, there was, a, there was. I remember for some and reason I have it stuck in my head. Also, also in- Mark Marin and Louis C.K. hosted occasionally. It was like all these guys who would become really, really har- incredibly famous later on. And then there was a show called Higgins, Boys, and Gruber. Do you remember that? Man, that sounds familiar, but I don't remember. Now, I don't Dave remember. Gruber, Dave Gruber, who is still around and is still doing stuff. I see him on on things all the time. Where did mm-hmm. I see Dave Gruber recently? Uh, Big Bang Theory, I think. He showed yeah, up right. on an episode of that. Oh, today I should mention is a historical day. Big Bang Theory surpasses Cheers as the longest running live action sitcom on television. <laughs> is that a good thing? I, you know, I, as far as running time, I think Cheers still has it beat because they're going to end soon. That's true. It's going to run because Jim uh, Parsons doesn't want to be Sheldon anymore. Well, I mean, they've already got their spinoff, and he is <laughs> the show. I mean, he's pretty much the draw to the show. Yeah, is Jim Parsons. And you know, hey. Uh, Everybody has made a ton of money off of all of this, so I'm very happy because this yeah, is a million America. dollars an episode. Jesus, and we That's thought twenty two million. A year. We thought Ted Danson was the shit because he got like three hundred thousand an episode back in the early nineties. <laughs> yeah, much like they said on Seth. Ted Danson got three hundred fifty thousand yeah, dollars yeah, an yeah. episode. Yeah, <laughs> and and then and in the final season he got half a million, which is like, and yeah. I guess if they're making that kind of money, why not spread it around? But um, anyway, yeah. so these two channels they merge, right? And and yeah. they use what's more they used the HBO money HBO kind of bankrolled Comedy Central. I will say that eventually, the whole thing got s- sold back to to like Viacom. Yeah, at some point. Yeah, uh, th- but that was like ten years later. I think like in the early two thousands. Yeah, but but at that time that this was the early nineties and this is when it boomed when it became this ultimate uh, really popular yeah. network and- where you had Mystery Science Theater. You had all these HBO downtown production things. You had the short attention span theater, Higgins Boys and Groover, and Penn Jillette was the voice of the network at that point. Yeah, I remember that. I remember their their early kind of breakout shows were one, Whose Line Is It Anyway? Sort of the British version. The British version, they, yes. They man, I watched that so much. I watched that. I literally would record it and watch it every day. And, and of course, it, there weren't a ton of episodes that they would start repeating. I'd watch them again. Uh, they they showed, uh, of course, uh, politically incorrect started there. Politically, but they also brought the, some of the other British comedies. They brought Ab Fab, absolutely fabulous. Yes, I remember and they that. ran it in a block with the young ones. Bronwyn doesn't remember this because she remembers watching the young ones on uh, MTV. But they did. I do too. They had a block too. of the young ones, Ab Fab, uh, both together, like at nine o'clock, late late night entertainment. I guess. I don't remember. I, I'm I'm sure that they did, but I remember. I have little little nuggets. They actually showed a little Black Adder. I, I remember they had they had a chunk where they showed like Black Adder. This was like mid '90s when nobody cared. Like mid late '90s. Yeah. After it sort of run its course, uh, Black Adder, Red Dwarf. They showed Red Dwarf for a while. Red Dwarf. They also showed this really bizarre science, another bizarre science fiction show called Quark, which only ran Quark, a couple, yeah, like a handful of episodes. But it was uh, it, it, this. This was it was a really fun channel. I remember watching it a lot at at that time in the early '90s, just picking up on everything that was advertised, usually during Mr. Science Theater or something, because that was a two-hour block where it showed early in the morning, like maybe Saturday at 11 a.m., and then they would repeat it later at like 7 p.m. or something. Mm-hmm. And, oh, should we men? Should we men? Should we mention like sort of the the different versions of the Daily Show that we've gotten over the years? I now, mean, yeah, of... the Daily Show. Um, Actually, this is uh, uh, another thing for my wife. She actually got to see a live taping of The Daily Show when it was back oh. in the Craig Kilborn days. Yes. This was when the show first started. Craig, Craig Kilborn was only on the show for, like, what, three years? Uh, yeah, he's, I believe it started in 96, and then he kind of, he kind of, I think he basically was able to get uh, another show. Like, well, I, I think he, he did that CBS. He did, like, the, the late, he late had, show yeah, or something he, on CBS. He tangled with Liz Winstead, who was one of the creators. Yeah, yeah. And it was really kind of controversial, so... Either he left or was asked to leave, but he wound up getting uh, the late, late show with Craig Coborn after Tom Snyder left. When when David Letterman went over to CBS, he got his company, Worldwide Pants, to produce the late, late show with Tom Snyder because Tom Snyder was kind of a hero of him. Tom Snyder left after a couple of years. I guess he didn't want to keep up with the rigors of the late show, so Craig Coborn came on. And mm-hmm. took over that took over that show, and he brought with him like apparently he had his own material that was copyrighted that only he could use, so he got to use the five questions, yeah. which was yeah a big the five thing. questions with the with the great clip of the the story of Ricky <laughs> that they always use where he crushes the face and the... after Craig Kilborn leaves they bring in John Stewart John Stewart was already they... a ubiquitous presence because he he had already had a late night show I think it was on MTV right uh yeah he had a late night well he had a show on MTV that no one watched and that that was his whole sort of shtick was he has all these shows that like get 
get canceled. And he was very much an MTV personality, right? Yes. Remember, and okay, the, can I just, uh, yes. uh, let me ask you a, a little bit of trivia here. Remember the, the show on MTV? It was hosted by Jon Stewart, Dennis Leary, and Janine Garofalo. And it was, they brought in all these old videos that they just wanted to destroy. Yeah, And okay. they brought oh, Vanilla I, Ice I, on. I remember this, and I remember one of the guests was... Uh, Vanilla Ice. Yes, Robert Van and, Winkle. <laughs> and I remember when he came on, and then they did the thing, and he destroyed the video. He he was he was very. Into, I think he has some anger management issues. He, he destroyed he really the video, liked... and he destroyed the set, and he didn't want to be called Vanilla Ice. And Dennis Leary and John Stewart kept going, Vanilla, Vanilla, stop! <laughs> <laughs> and he was very angry. And it just made him angrier and angrier. I mean, like he yeah. was. I, I, they brought him on as a special guest, but then you know, yeah. I mean, it's like. Yeah, you look at the VH1, VH1 behind the music about Vanilla Ice and his career and how the fact that he's kind of like a one-hit wonder and everybody forgot about him and, and uh, what's his name, Suge Knight tried to drop him off a window ledge yeah. or something. I don't know. And he was just filled with so much anger. But it was, it, it, but those were our stand-up com comedians back then. This was at the height of what they were. You know, Dennis Leary, Jon Stewart, Janine Garofalo, people like that. And uh, so Jon Stewart goes on. He becomes he becomes the Daily Show host, and as far as I'm concerned, uh, I I did find Craig Kilburn funny, but he was kind of funny in a smarmy way, you know. Whereas yeah. John Stewart felt more he was more open and he was more genuine, yeah. and he seemed and he he's a better I th I thought he was a better interviewer in that way. He's mm -hmm. kind of like a Howard Stern. Howard Stern interviews. I know he makes a lot of jokes about you know show us your boobs and all that. So how many how many women did you sleep with Gene Simmons? But Howard Stern was one of the great interviewers when you take all that away. And I think Jon Stewart kind of kind of d did it that way, too. One of my favorite episodes of The Daily Show is when he made fun of that financial guy, John Kramer. I think his name is John Kramer. The, you know, the guy that... The, 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 uh, the money I, guy? The, the guy. The money guy. He made fun of him then and because of all of his sort of weird sort of financial arguments. And then he basically... It came. He basically had uh, Kramer come on the show eventually because it got to this weird fever pitch. This was even yes. before Twitter, I think. Yeah. And he basically Kramer came on and apologized. <laughs> but for all the remember, all the bad stock advice he gave. For all the, the bad stock advice. He basically just you know he completely made him his bitch, and I found that so amusing that he basically was able to shame someone into a now. Of course, you know Kramer's gone back to being a douche and yeah. doing his weird shit. But what, money, mad, time, was, money, was money, mad or something, money, madness, well, money. He's the guy who pushes the button, sell, and he pushes the button or buy, right. or something like that. Yeah. And I just found that amusing that he had such an influence at the time that he could have somebody come on and basically take his beating. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he and he does. He did it. And he's and he's, I'm, he's going to have some show at some point again. But he does it in a way where he's kind of like he's nicely killing you yeah <laughs> like you don't even know he's doing it to you and he's just in this sort of quiet well, I, way yeah. where he's in a sort of a nebbishy kind of way he'll like basically destroy you and you'll thank him what for i it. liked i also <laughs> liked that uh, he was honest um when it came to their allegiances and affiliations and this was around the time let's say during George W. Bush's term is mm -hmm. probably some of the best comedy that we saw out of Comedy Central. because The not... only real problem is none of it really worked. <laughs> I'm always like, yeah, it's funny and we laugh, but eh, well, it didn't that's really a difference. much of a dent it's, in anything. Yeah, but it's not supposed to because every time, mm -hmm. every time a comedy show comes along and says or does things that are controversial – in some way, they say they're journalism, but then if people get too offended, they say, hey, lighten up, we're just comedians. They keep doing this back and forth thing. I mean, Colbert does it, Samantha B. Oh, and I got to mention get Colbert, Stephen Colbert, Samantha B., Steve Carell, uh, who else? Rob Riggle, yes. Rob Corddry, uh, who else? Oh, God, so many people. Oh, John Oliver, you know. These guys all went off and became stars in their own right. Uh, I was just, I just, Ed Helms. Ed Helms. They basically went on the show, get a little bit of heat, and then go off and do something else and, and make a lot of money. <laughs> but it was kind of like, I mean, like when you look at the modern journalism these days, they are hiring out of central casting. A lot of these people are not seasoned um, journalists. They're, they're actors, they're performers, they're entertainers. A lot, a lot, of, the, a lot of the new shows do this now. Uh, and Daily Show kind of takes a lot of its formula, I think, from Weekend Update. You know, okay, I was I was explaining my theory about Weekend Update from Saturday Night Live and comparing it to The Daily Show. The Weekend Update, what they would do is they would give you the real news and then make a joke after. Mm -hmm. Whereas Daily Show would kind of take the real news, mix it in with jokes. So they would have their jokes. Yep. Yes, sweetie, I hear you. Oh, sorry, my cat. They mix in the jokes with the story, and then they... and, and but But what I really 
enjoyed about the Daily Show was sometimes they would do these these segments that are so bizarre, but they're real, they're true. Like I remember, they did a a special uh, like a kind of a a, pr a produced report about this woman who has a love affair with her pet grizzly bear, and it's like, <laughs> they, I mean, and and they took they did it completely straight, and that's what made it so fucking hilarious. John Stewart earns this incredible place of respect, and it's kind of like a blessing because one of his last gigs before he got the Daily Show gig was a tribute to George Carlin. It was like, you know, I don't know what, 30 years in comedy for HBO or something? Mm -hmm. And they were, at, they were in Aspen, and he interviewed George Carlin, and at the end of the interview, George Carlin says, I see, I see great things in your future, John Stewart. And yeah. not a couple of months later, he got the Daily Show gig, and he wanted to... Because how long was he on that show? I want to say he was on from 99... Until uh, I think he sort of abdicated his 20, throne. Was it 2015? 2014? 2015, yeah. This is the, the network that introduced Politically Incorrect. But it was, it did start, I remember when Politically Incorrect started. It started during a, um, it was an after show for one of the State of the Union addresses. And I think it might have been, uh, I th it was probably Bill Clinton, right? Around that time. Well, if it, it was, was, yeah, if it was around that time, it would have been Bill Clinton. Yeah. So it was an after show that, that Bill Maher organized as a panel so they could discuss the speech afterward. And he had on the panel with him, he had Richard Belzer, who became like a regular guest of his um, on, on Politically Incorrect and Bill Maher. And I think it had, he had Ben Stein maybe. And he had, he had this actress, I, Sally Kirkland. I did this actress, Sally Kirkland, who was the, her main claim to fame was that she was nominated for an Oscar uh, for a movie where she played some kind of an immigrant. I forget the name of the movie, though. It's called Anna, I think. Anna! So Sally Kirkland, I guess she was an outspoken, uh, 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 you know, outspoken kind of actress or something. But he would often, on Politically Incorrect, uh, and Politically Incorrect, I think, was a better show than, than Real Time because Real Time is, is more, it get, he gets less celebrities in there, less off-the-wall yeah. weirdo celebrities being weird, and more, more political uh, pundits and junkies, political junkie types. And occasionally mm -hmm. he'll get Belzer or John Waters on. And that's that, those are the shows I like to watch because I like watching those guys. I like the way they talk. I like the way they think. So Bill Maher um, became an enormous hit, so much so that Politically Incorrect wound up moving to ABC, right? Yes. And then Bill Maher got into his little bit of trouble. <laughs> yeah, because he said some some stuff about 9-11 that some people didn't like. And yeah. this is look, this is the Disney-owned network. And if you say something that pisses off the wrong people, especially people that have guns and are pissed off, right? that's what's going to happen. This, so, is a, this is a different Bill Maher. This is a Bill Maher who can completely understand and sympathize with the fact that people get fired for making comments, you know? Because mm -hmm. when it comes down to it, HBO is probably maybe one of the more safer places to be now because... They're not relying on advertisers. So when no. Bill Maher made his comments on the Politically Incorrect show, suddenly sponsors were like, well, I'm pulling my advertising in. But every once in a while, every once in a while, he'll say something. He'll he'll drop an N-bomb every once in a while or accidentally, and then he'll, he'll, he'll apologize he'll get anyway. trouble. He said something. He said something, and then he needed, like, what, Ice Cube to lecture him on the use of the N-word? Yeah, uh, one time, fine, which I found, I, which I found completely. I, I wouldn't ridiculous. say it's necessarily he wanted to keep his job. He probably would have kept his job, but he just, it was more like he wanted to just like not be hassled. Like there are levels. Well, of, he like, wasn't. He wasn't my job, or I don't want. I don't want like. A whole I don't bunch think. Of I don't think he was in danger happen. of being fired. I don't think he was in danger of losing the show nah. on nah. HBO. Because we we watch the show to watch him be an asshole. So a that's lot of times, part, yes. And then he got in trouble. He got in trouble over the hiatus because he said something about how um, Stanley dying is not the worst thing in the world, and get a fucking life, you comic book that, geeks. You and know all what? That shit. He's kind of right. He's kind of right. He may be kind of right, but it's it's not the right thing. I mean, I'm not a big comic book guy, but that seemed kind of in poor oh, taste. Side note, I, mean, I know you're not going to see a Captain Marvel. Miss Marvel, David. Miss Marvel, it's, it's Ms., whatever. It's Ms. Marvel. Uh, but uh, there is a great, I mean, I don't know how caught up you are on Marvel movies, but... Uh, and basically, at the beginning, when they show the Marvel logo, they have kind yes. of the Marvel music that kind of plays over the logo now. Yeah, yeah. And it's kind of like a like a triumphant a, sort of it's a, heroic. It's a, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I've yeah. I, I have seen some of those uh, pop and up. And they show they basically show like little clips of different Marvel characters and movies and everything. Yeah. Uh, during uh, during Captain Marvel, when they showed the Marvel thing, it was all little shots of all the Stan Lee cameos. Mm, yes. Over the thing, and then at the end, it says "Thanks, Stan" or something um, like that. I do want to mention. Um, my favorite Stan Lee cameo ever 
is more than a cameo. It's more, it's kind of like an extended performance. And uh, we just lost Larry Cohen, who is one of the great filmmakers. He's, he's a filmmaker, a writer, and director that I, I completely admire. We did a show about him for Extreme Cinema. He made a movie called The Ambulance, starring mm -hmm. Eric Roberts, Megan Gallagher, James Earl Jones, and Stan Lee as it's himself. Stan Lee. As himself. He's Eric Roberts' boss, because Eric Roberts is a comic book artist in the movie. It's one of the great This movies. is feeling sort of uh, Mother Jugs and Speed to me, for some reason. <laughs> Mother Jugs and Speed. Was uh, that Bill Cosby? That was Bill Cosby. That was the Bill Cosby. Was... That was the Bill Cosby. In the Mother Jugs and Speed. Now I gotta put you in the ambulance. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. So, but it's one of the great movies. I I find it. Seek it. It's on Blu-ray. I'm gonna grab it. I, as soon as I found out it was on Blu-ray, I had to go and grab it. I have a VHS of it somewhere. But it there, was a there, movie uh, that was buried for years. Uh, there, there's also a great. Actually, in Captain Marvel, there is a great. Like, I might be the last Stanley cameo because they filmed like four. They'd film him in chunks because they knew he was old. So they'd film a whole bunch of his cameos for different movies at once, and then they just hope it fit into the movie. Um, right. The, his cameo is like a Captain Marvel comes down. There's a big fight on a bus, and uh, when he's on, he's on the bus and he's like reading a he's reading a script for Mall Rats. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and, and they just sort of look at each other and wink, and then walk past it. I'm that's, like, that, that's, that, if that's the last one, that's a great one. That that is very cute. That is very cute. Mallrats, another good movie, another hidden gem out there. People should watch. Moving on, uh, now Comedy Central, of course, is the uh, the network that premiered and continues to show South Park, which is still one yeah. of the great cartoons. I think it's a, it is. And the thing about South Park is, to me, it's always consistently at least very funny. But every once in a while, there'd be like every season, there's like one or two, maybe three episodes that like they hit it so perfectly. At least to me, like yes. they'll, they'll, they're always consistently funny. But man, and every Siren, once in a while, apparently too. She and sometimes it's it's ones that they throw together like in a day, like a news event will happen. And oh yeah, 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 yeah. Those show. guys are so quick with turnover. They they, they, they probably they'll, they'll, have they probably have like about forty or fifty episodes they haven't even aired yet because so many things happen in the course of a news cycle, and they get mm -hmm. in there. And it's like, however they do it. I mean, damn, damn they work fast. They yeah, they really throw it do. together on a computer. Like they'll, they'll like, like something will happen. And they'll, oh, they'll do you think? Do you think that they'll, uh, they'll shelve their Michael Jackson episode? I don't think they will. <laughs> oh, probably not. You're being ignorant. No, you're no, you're ignorant. being ignorant. You're being ignorant. <laughs> I mean, they went and make fun. Well, those guys, again, they work just incredibly fast and, and really, I mean, like the classic ones that I remember in the first, when the, in the first season, well, it was yeah, a those, mind those, blower because yeah, they, were, I, they were cursing. They were actually yeah, cursing. The the early shows are extremely messed up. And I think part of it is because uh, they, they do that little, they do that little, uh, that little uh, sort of short movie that gets passed around that basically gets them South Park. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's very South Park-esque. And then... That that gives them like a little bit of notoriety. They get the South Park pilot. They do that, and then after they do the pilot, they go right into making that movie Basketball. Right, with uh, and, di they directed get, they by get, get, David Zucker. Right, he directed yeah, it, and, and he so cast Trey and Matt in that. Yeah, and so they do that, and then but they then, but then they get South Park, and they're like, oh crap, we gotta do South Park. So this is what I heard. This I remember this like on the making of thing. They're doing they do both basketball and those first chunks of South Park episodes at the same time, and they have like sort of a mobile, uh, like animation van like set up or right, something. Yeah, and yeah. Basically, like going and no sleep, just back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So that's probably why those early ones are so fucked up. Now I want to point out that South Park started in August of '97, and those first. 13 episodes of that season are all classics that I can quote from because, mm -hmm. okay, Cartman gets an anal probe, Weight That's Game, yeah. Weight Game yeah. 4000, Volcano. Yeah. Uh, remember Patrick Duffy? Uh, hi, kids. Yeah, I'm TV's Patrick Duffy. Uh, <laughs> Big Gay Al's Big Gay Boat Ride, an elephant, yeah. an elephant makes love to a pig. Uh, the, freak, uh, the, uh, the, the, the Christmas Poo. Yeah, Death, Pink Eye, Starving Marvin, Mr. Hanky, The Christmas Poo, Damien, Tom's Rhinoplasty, Mecca Streisand, Cartman's mom is a dirty slut. Those were the first uh, 13 episodes in that first yeah. season of South Park. And that, that really did change. It, that, in conjunction with The Daily Show, put Comedy Central on the map. Yeah, a side note, uh, the South Park movie that would come out, like, I think in, in summer of 99, which, by the way, if you look at the credits, it's 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 still like the, the Comedy Central uh, is sort of the joint venture. Because yes. it's like uh, it's like both a Paramount and a Warner Brothers film, and then like all their episodes would be on Warner Home Video at least at the beginning. Plus, not only know. not only do Trey and Matt have controlling interest in the show, 
they also have complete ownership of the merchandising. So they follow the Lucas pattern. Let's uh, let's move on to um, Cartoon Network. Uh, All right. I, now, I don't have a ton of memories of this because I've never. I, I don't mean, have I'm a only... lot of origin stories about the Cartoon Network except that they didn't start. What I remember was they didn't start as a network first. They started as a production company and they were producing stuff. They were producing content, and then they put their network together and started putting everything. Well, this was this is basically just one of those. It's sort of a side TBS thing. It, it, I think again, yeah. again, it goes to like what Ted Turner owned. He owned like Hanna Barbera. Yes. So, or at least the Hanna Barbera like library. So he just had like he could just show his Hanna Barbera stuff on that channel a lot. I think. And also, he owned a lot of the Looney Tunes and the regular MGM cartoon library because he had the. MTV. Oh yeah, that's right. Because of the MGM thing, yeah. The MGM, I'm sorry, I said MTV for some reason. He also owned uh, Fleischer Studios, so he had the po Popeye cartoons Ooh. as well. He pur he purchased Hanna Barbera for three hundred twenty million dollars in cash. He actually had three hundred twenty million dollars in a briefcase. Oh, he had all kinds of money <laughs> at the time. He and, still does. It's just they they bought him out, so he probably still does. And then they launched Cartoon Network in 1992. All right. Uh, and then so you, they show the first cartoon I think was a Bugs Bunny cartoon called Rhapsody Rabbit. I believe it's the one where Bugs Bunny is a, <laughs> he's a symphony conductor and right. um, uh, he's driving like this one person crazy or something, just going crazy with it. But th th it would also mix uh, Droopy Dog, uh, Popeye, Hanna-Barbera cartoons, and uh, Tom and Jerry. Mm -hmm. And then uh, there was a block of cartoons I remember called Tune Heads. And it would just be cartoons overnight, just cartoons like music videos in a way, you know, like we talked about MTV. We talked yeah. about short attention span theater. This was kind of like music video, but cartoony kind of a thing. But it didn't really have like any hosts or anything. They would bring in um, Cartoon Planet. Well, I remember Cartoon Planet because I remember watching over four different kinds of cartoons that they would show that were produced by Cartoon Network. And I, I forget, God, there was one about a dog who didn't talk. And I wish somebody would tell me what the name of that show was. Uh, um, all I can think of is Family Dog, but that's probably it's something not, else. It's no, no. Unfortunately, it's not Family. No, it's something else. It was. It was very. It was like. It was like British or something, but it was like. Uh, it was a dog that didn't talk. He just tended to observe. Uh, the, hmm. His owners, going through all kinds of crazy adventures, and sometimes he would, I guess, save their butts or something. In that mm -hmm. way. And there, there are other things. It was kind of like experimental. It kind of reminded me a little bit of liquid television the way that was. After that, yeah, you would have uh, the new adventures of Johnny Quest. You would have the Radical Squad. Two Stupid Dogs. I remember that. Uh, something called the Moxie Show. And then the Powerpuff Girls. Okay, now Powerpuff Girls was a, a very popular with my wife. She loved what was, watching okay. that show. What was the one? Oh God, it, it was mid '90s. Uh, like the, the interview show, the like the I can't remember the name of the oh, like he, he. Yeah, Space Ghost, Coast to Coast. Space Ghost. That's what I was thinking of. Yeah, there was Space a, Ghost, Coast to Coast. I remember that. Plus, there was also Sea Lab. You remember there was a, a, a show called Sea Lab underneath the water. Sea uh, Lab. Now what? Now what happened after that? Oh, there was also Samurai Jack. Which, mm -hmm. uh, now, the thing about what put Cartoon Network on the map was Matt Groening. Matt Groening started watching Cartoon Network, and he started praising it. He started praising the quality of the production and the animation, and that with, with him in their corner, they, they put themselves on the map, and they were able to do something called Adult Swim. Adult Swim became this huge thing. Yeah, most of it, how much is the sort of the ratio of animated to not animated? Would you say? Well, when it started, it was all animation. Now, mm -hmm. uh, I think, well, maybe since, I want to say, well, first off, they took Space Ghost and they turned it into that interview show with live action people. They took the TV that, you know, because I guess the formula was Space Ghost would be interviewing these people. And he would have people on, like, Seth Green, and he would have, I don't know, weird people, like Yoko Ono, I think he had on the show. I remember, I remember he had Jim Carrey on once because they actually put it on, like, the tape of The Mask. I remember it was, like, sort of a special feature when I ran, and I was like, oh, there's a little interview with uh, Jim Carrey about The Mask. Right, so they would, like, get these, uh, get new actors in to overdub mm -hmm. for, space, for Space Ghost and also for C-Lab 2021, which they took this old cartoon called C-Lab, because the animation quality was very rough, it looked like early Hanna Barbera. Those those shows mm -hmm. that they just overdubbed new lines and turned it into this kind of unintentional comedy. Uh, and then there were other shows based off of that, like uh, the Brack Show was was a spinoff of Space Ghost. Did Brack Brack was on the show, I think. Um, I forget what what part he played. And then there was also Harvey Birdman, attorney at law, which which actually, in addition to having 
you know, Stephen Colbert was on The Daily Show, but he also did voices for Harvey Birdman. And uh, he would pop up. Uh, also, Seth MacFarlane would pop up on the show doing voices. Mm-hmm. And then after that, they had Aqua Teen Hunger Force, which I watched religiously. Yeah, I've never really got into that. And then I tried to watch the, the like the Aqua Teen Hunger Force movie thing, and I got about 10 minutes in. I'm like, ah, boy. You really couldn't do it? You couldn't? I... Couldn't do it. Sometimes things just don't speak to me, and that was one of them. This actually did speak to me. I remember because it was just so crazy and ar- anarchic. So they would show. Now, what, what made Adult Swim popular was reruns of Family Guy and Futurama. And the, oh. great, the great thing about that was there were very few commercial breaks. There was only one commercial break per half hour program. So you got to see a What's, lot. What is the one? I, can't, oh God, I, I feel like a total idiot. Uh, the one with uh, the Seth Green one where they had like uh, Robot anime. Chicken. Robot Chicken. That's what, when they did their sort of Star Wars. Yes. <laughs> Robot Chicken. I'm like, oh, thank you. <laughs> that was that was one of the best. And they, they even made a joke about that on Family Guy because Family mm-hmm. Guy did their own series of Star Wars movies. Yes, and, they did. And yeah. Seth Green, who plays Chris on the show, is like, didn't Robot Chicken do this a few months ago? What was so important about Adult Swim showing Family Guy is that the ratings went through the roof of people yeah, watching. Yeah, that's pretty much the, the reason it came back, because it went away, it barely hung on for a few years, went away, and then just people were watching those reruns. It almost did like a Star Trek where the reruns brought it back. The reruns brought it back, and Futurama too. In addition, mm-hmm. Futurama was canceled. Futurama's on Comedy Central now, I think. Yeah, it was bought by Comedy Central, and it just ruined it for me because they put too many commercials in now. Yes. Oh, one more thing, Home Movies. Now, Home Movies is a... Uh, favorite show of mine and Bromans, and we have the whole collection of it on DVD based and on just that, watching it. Is that now? Um, I'm thinking of Dr. Katz now. now is it, it, is was, it, that... it was from the same people who brought it. Is it in Squiggle Vision? Is it in the same sort the of style? First, the first season was in Squiggle Vision, and then, and then all subsequent seasons after that were done with Flash animation. All right. So, but, but really funny, clever. Stand-up comedians. Louis C.K. had a regular part on home movies. He played uh, the kid's uh, um, dad. Um, <laughs> That's great parenting right there. Yeah, it is. Uh, now, I'm going to strangle my cat, and then we'll, I guess we'll move on here to sci-fi, right? Sci-fi. Is that the last one? This is the <laughs> last one. I know. Okay. Science fiction, the sci-fi channel, which was S-C-I-F-I when it first started. It yeah, was a- and I'm a little cheesed off because they basically turned it. It's not even sci-fi. It, like the, I, I knew I knew. Now the, they just the did a of, phonetic uh, spelling of it. Now it's S-Y-F-Y. And yeah. I'm like, I, I knew the writing was on the wall when they started showing like James Bond movies on sci-fi because I guess because they were showing them on USA and it's part of the same service. I, I felt that the writing was on the wall when number one. They canceled Mystery Science Theater, and number two, they replaced it with two hours of wrestling. They yeah, showed they show wrestling, wrestling on and... sci-fi. No, I mean it is it is certainly fi, <laughs> but it is there's no sci in there. But okay, to... now what happened was Mystery Science Theater was canceled by Comedy Central uh, in 1997. They made a movie that was out in theaters. I remember going to see it. And I remember that was in '95, I think. '95, '97, something like that. Uh, the final season, and then. Uh, Sci-Fi picked it up a year later in 1998, and it ran for three more seasons on on Sci-Fi and then was canceled by Sci-Fi when they did this major restructuring of the network, uh, and they brought in the st- st- stupid shit like the wrestling and all that. Mm-hmm. But uh, before then, Sci-Fi was an incredible network. Where you... Oh, man, because they would show stuff you want to talk about uh, to promote uh, Mr. Chris Cooling's show, Forgotten TV. Forgotten TV. That's Forgotten.TV, hosted by Chris Cooling, the great Chris Cooling. Yes, and they basically would show a lot of the stuff that they show – now on those sort of retro channels, the sort of retro side channels, like they show like, you know, Buck Rogers, uh, 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 Battlestar Galactica, all the uh, digital kind of antenna network kind of a thing. Weird, weird pilots kind of like, I bet they would show a lot of that stuff that, that he does now with his sort of uh, planet, uh, the planet earth and the Gene Roddenberry shows, like well, basically sort of short one offs. They, they absolutely did. And they would show these things unironically as, as entertainment, yeah. you know, I mean, we get, you, you would get bad movies showing up on sci-fi before Mystery Science Theater even gave it its treatment because sci-fi had the rights. But they made a condition of Mystery Science Theater moving over there was that they had to do completely science fiction movies for like two years. Mm-hmm. And it was all movies that they showed, like Revenge of the Creature, The Mole People, uh, The Soul Taker. I remember this movie called The Soul Taker. It had, uh, who was it, Robert Zadar and, and, and Martin Sheen's brother. What's his name? Joe Estevez? Joe Estevez. <laughs> you know, so they would show these movies, uh, but they would also show things that I that I remember enjoying from back in the day. 
they showed uh, Friday the Thirteenth the series. Uh, I have great memories of because I got we got the Sci Fi Channel in ninety four, and I remember it was like it, they made it some sort of weird sort of premium channel, but not really. It was like you had to have the premium addressable box to get it. Yeah, yeah. But it didn't necessarily like add to the charge. That must but have been something. Ha- but you had to have like the extended the extended service. That must box. have been something similar to what we had because I don't remember us having sci-fi until we moved to Queens because I don't think Paragon Cable on the Upper East Side had it. We had it when we when we finally moved to Queens. Uh, my first early memories of it were like, oh, we have sci-fi. Oh, <gasps> they're showing Land of the Lost. Oh, they showed Land I- of the Lost. Finally caught up on they it. They also so showed shit it. that didn't last, like Misfits of Science, Manimal. They yeah. showed this show with Parker Stevenson and uh, Miriam Diablo called Probe, I think. Probe, yeah, that, that's a forgotten TV uh, episode, actually. It is, and we're only like what nine, ten episodes of that, right? Yeah. These shows they would they would come and go very quickly, and a lot of them didn't even get full seasons, so we just put these in rotation. And they would show a lot of the stuff that me TV shows now, like uh, Time Tunnel, Voyage mm-hmm. to the Bottom of the Sea, Lost in Space. The big thing that happened was in 1999, I believe they showed remastered Star Trek episodes uncut. 50-minute episodes, but they would have to put them in a 90-minute block. So they showed mm-hmm. a shitload of... Plus, they had interviews and behind-the-scenes stuff as well. So yeah. I, have a, I have a few tapes of those, because I remember taping them. And it was like a big... Yeah. It was a big event. Yeah, this was, but this was like a weird sort of thing. It was before those HD remasters that you now can see on Netflix and, and various yeah, this other was, things. This was back, but this was sort of the, the, the intern effects, between yeah. those 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 '80s ones that they showed. Uh, they actually they may have been the same masters they used for those videotapes. Oh uh, yeah, like probably. in the '80s, and yeah. then but then they were able to show them on TV as opposed to the they ones they were showing clean. on TV. Where yeah, I'll tell you though. I had a couple of purchased, actual purchased episodes of Star Trek mm. uh, from Paramount Home Video. It turned out that there were added scenes. There, scenes were added into the episodes that were extra, that were not in on my tapes, mm-hmm. that I paid like maybe 20 bucks a piece for at the time. Interesting. Right? I emailed Sci-Fi, and I said, how come I'm seeing new scenes when my quote-unquote uncut episodes don't have these scenes? Mm-hmm. And they actually did email me back eventually. It took a little while, maybe about a month. And we're like, oh, Mr. Lowe, we found these. These were these were part of the original um, the original camera negatives. So we added in extra scenes to compensate for the fact that it was a 90 minute block. So I was like, oh, so, OK. Also, it's basically almost like ex- like extended editions, really, like extended, even more than they would show yeah. on the TV yeah. originally. Yeah. And these wow. were not part of the original DVD run that they had. Wow. But now they are part of the Blu-ray run, I've noticed. Interesting. So the Blu-ray added those scenes back in. They would show movies that were sort of like, uh, like you'd be like the first place on cable. You'd see like the the director's cut of Blade Runner in widescreen. Like they started yes. show, like, kind of yes. becoming more sort of. Kind and of and also 2001. Or, 2001. And it'd be stuff like that. Where and it's like, Spawn. It was very... I remember they had Spawn the movie. I remember that. Uh, kind of, they were almost like a destination of like you want you want your sort of movie nerd sci-fi director's cut widescreen version of a movie. You go there, like they would show like the Planet of the Apes movies in widescreen, things like that. Yes, and but those early days of sci-fi where they showed the TV shows, they would have interviews with the actors in the commercial buffers and everything, mm-hmm. host segments and stuff. You know where they would introduce it. Like they had when they showed the time tunnel, uh, and when they showed uh, what like probe or something like that they'd have an interview with james darren who was a director also yeah i think that they did i think they did that with the with the remember dark the, shadows too they had dark shadows, dark shadows. and they had I the think, remake i think when they showed land of the lost like at least for a while they, they would show like interviews with some of the people from the show right like it was like a special and things of course by the time i got to it they were just like stripped them out and showing them in a weird hour but yes, yes they would have like specials like sci-fi specials of like shows and, and interviews and things i'm sure you can find some of these things on youtube i would guess oh yeah 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 and and also sci-fi brought japan japanese animation they showed mm-hmm. a lot of japanese animation at night usually you know i want to say this and this but this didn't happen until like 2011 i think mm-hmm. 2011 2012 they started showing uh, episodes of Star Blazers. Yes, I, but it was only for it, it was this weird thing because it's a very serialized show. Yeah, and they only showed it for like a couple of months. It was like they started showing it and then they gave up. So it was literally like left you hanging if you just started watching the show. <laughs> and I was like, oh man. Well, Star, you know, Star Blazers was interesting. It was a show that they showed um, that 
the UA- UHF channels, the independent channels, would show in their afternoon block after school. So you'd see mm-hmm. like He Man, you'd see GI Joe, you'd see the Smurfs, you'd see Star Blazers. Yeah. So it was like it was like an all in this. Yeah, block. we 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 got it here like uh, locally. They started showing it, I think like seventy nine, basically yeah. seventy nine to eighty five. The same two seasons over and over again, and then they would maybe take a break, like they'd either show them in the summer or during the the, the, the sort of the school year, so and some, then they would kind yeah. of al- they kind of alternate between them. But uh, you know, for me, I'm like sometimes I, should... I do a little parody where Donald Trump says Space Force, and then I perce- I follow it with the Star Blazers <laughs> yes. theme song. So Space Force, our Star Blazers. <sighs> what has happened to sci-fi? It has gone. It's in the shitter. <laughs> it's gone to hell because it, it's now in this kind of self-parody thing where you get these sci-fi pictures, original films. Oh yeah, yeah, like like the um, the Sharknado is what I'm. Sharknado, Sharktopus, Mansquito, Two-Headed Shark Attack, Ogre, Ice Twister, Star Runners, and then stunt casting. Like the, I remember there was a movie I forgot what it was, but I forgot what the title was. But it had Debbie Gibson and Tiffany in it, and they were the Ooh. stars of the movie. And it was just like kind of like weird has was- been. Heroes. Was it a horror movie or something? It, it was or? like a Sharknado type movie. Oh, that's that's a waste of their talents. They should have had a movie where it's basically, you know, uh, they just fight each other and they hate each other and they do a spell or something and they're witches or something. That would have been awesome. Yeah, Charmed, something like Charmed, that. Charmed, do like Charmed. Yeah, they, they basically put a spell on each other and, and try to hex each other and then they realize that they're actually friends or something. You know, it would have been awesome. Mm, yeah. Now, these days, I don't watch sci fi. I have no interest in. in I any. haven't watched sci-fi, and it's not. It's mostly because of just the way cable is right now. Of like, I mostly just do combination of streaming, and 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 mostly just I most I basically just like do streaming and news. It's basically all I seem to do. Like, and of course, like when I stream though, I'll, I'll stream like HBO and I'll stream Showtime, but I do it that way instead of watching it on the cable because the picture and sound quality are a little better sometimes. Right, right. And these days. There is nothing left. I mean, they they had an incredible run, I think, with the Battlestar Galactica reboot. That was an enormously yeah, popular Yeah, yeah, and show. Caprica, if you want to... Caprica? Uh, like, they'll, they'll try to do shows, but then people just don't watch, and they do. They are expensive, so, you know. They are. Happen. They are very expensive. Uh, but it was very popular. I, I never really got into Battlestar Galactica. I watched the first... Uh, miniseries, the 2003 miniseries that set the whole thing up, and I thought it was very well made. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the problem was, I, I maybe they didn't advertise the right time for me to be watching it, so I didn't really get into watching it as a, as a show. Mm-hmm. So I didn't understand a lot of the clever references that they threw in there. Um, I did like the cast; I thought the cast was great, uh, and the yeah. way the way everything was put together, and a lot of that stuff would wind up getting ripped off by by the Star Wars franchise later on. I noticed a lot of the visual effects were kind of ripped off. Not only that, but also Enterprise. Um, Enterprise. Some of Enterprise's visual effects were ripped off by Star Wars as well. So it's it's, it's very interesting. This uh, concludes our run of how many episodes have we done about Basic Cable? Six or something? Uh, 5,000, I feel like. Yeah, and I guess uh, next time I would like to talk, uh, to wrap up everything by talking a little bit about the weird public access and just just everything that we might have forgotten and, and yeah i'm gonna try i'm gonna try to rack my brain try to because there were little details that i'm like oh i should have mentioned this and then i completely forgot i'll try and rack my brain and try and figure out what what i missed and yeah we'll talk about public access and maybe we'll come up with other stuff and we'll go on tangents and you'll probably make another show out of it <laughs> probably okay until then i am the russian bot and i was joined by the npc <laughs> david anderson and um thanks for tuning in and uh Uh, please stop emailing me complaining about the fact that we don't use video clips. I don't feel like getting a copyright strike. Thank you very much. Uh, Good night. Good night. You always go high when you say good night. I'm happy to be out. (laughs) I'm like, peace out. Seacrest out. Seacrest out. Seacrest in.